Hello everybody. Today we are going to go through the process of removing and replacing your water pump uh, shaft oil seal on the little 250cc Chinese scooter, the CF Moto uh, 250cc 172mm engine. So we'll show you the process of how to take this little guy out and put it back together. Okay, first set of what we've got to do is take these four bolts off of uh, the housing. First thing you want to do is open up your um, your fill neck cap on at the top of the radiator so you have some airflow and loosen this bolt here at the bottom. Okay, that'll actually let your coolant drain out of the drain out of this actual hole right here. This right here actually is the drain hole for the coolant out of the scooter. Okay, so that's where, that's where your coolant will drain out from. What we're going to replace inside there are these little guys right here. Okay? Uh, you've got your actual oil seal that separates the oil side from the water side of what's inside this shaft in here. Okay? Then outside that you've got this little metal cap that sits in there and it's spring-loaded in here. Okay? It's got a spring-loaded gasket sitting right there. Then outside that, there's this little nylon washer that sits inside a rubber gasket as well. Okay, and all those things get layered up inside there uh, behind the impeller that's back here. And once we get that broken up, I'll show you exactly what that looks like. Okay, we've got our four beds removed here. All right. So then here is your exposed impeller shaft or impeller cover. Um, you're going to need to take this off, okay, that actually is threaded right onto the very end of the shaft, of, the, of your water pump shaft, okay. It's just a 12 millimeter bolt, uh, and it is reversed thread, okay, so you're going to turn it, you know, opposite direction, All right, so you'll turn it clockwise to take it off. Okay, we've got the impeller off, okay, and came off pretty easily, All right. You can see in here there's a little bit of junk in there. And I'm assuming that's probably my failed seal material that's worked its way out. Okay. Um, you may notice when you start turning this thing to the right, okay, the crankshaft will start turning with it. All right, just let it go ahead and turn until, until that cylinder starts getting on the compression stroke. And then the, just the pressure from the engine pushing up will, uh, will give you enough leverage to pop this thing off. It's not on there terribly tight. All right, then next we have this little metal cap that's inside here okay and there's not really a good way to get at it to pull it or pop it out of place so what I'm going to do is take a chisel or screwdriver or something get right in here on the edge okay and kind of pry it you know chip it away just a little bit and then I can get something for my pliers to grab onto and then yank the rest of that out of there okay got our little metal cap out of there now All right. Um, Took a couple of minutes of uh, kind of denting in the sides and prying with your needle nose. Okay, uh, just be patient with it; it will come out of there. It may be very, very, very small increments at the time that it comes out, but it will come out. Uh, part of the reason why it's difficult to get out is because from the factory they put a little bit of RTV sealant around the edge of it. Okay, and you want to do that also when you put the new one back in. You want to put just a tiny, tiny little bit of RTV in there just to keep it locked in place. Okay, now I also have my oil seal out from way back in there. Uh, you can still see there's a whole bunch of junk that's in there. I'm assuming that's just oil and <coughs> water buildup and coolant buildup from inside the block. Here's my old oil seal. I don't know how well you can see this on the video or not, but you can kind of see the inner edge of it there is uh, it's kind of chewed up. Okay. And that's where your leak emanates from, is right around that shaft. And it'll just let the water and the oil mix, and that's not good. So, we'll replace that. How I pulled that out, I just used a, uh, an old dental tool that I had. And I just poked a hole through it, through the edge of it, and then just kind of used that little hole to pry it off. Okay. Uh, and you can use, you know, you can use a little nail or something that you can like bend the end of the nail with give you something to pry on it with lots of little little tools like this will work okay. alright so now we gotta clean up the inside get all that ugh, all that nasty stuff out of there 
And once that's cleaned up, then we can start putting the new parts back in. Okay, we have our housing and everything pretty well cleaned out. All the uh, seal mating surfaces are uh, free of debris, clear of any junk that was built up on them. And you can see here the shaft. I don't know if you can see it in the video or not, but the shaft actually had some rust that was on it. So you can kind of scrape that off and wipe that off as best as you can. <coughs> From there, we need to put all of our new seals in. This is the impeller, okay, with the reverse threads on the back. This is where this little seal with the nylon washer in it goes, okay. So the new one just slips right down in there, like so. Oh, wait, whoopsie, forgot. There is washer that goes in there first washer sits in there like so and then seal sits on top of that just very gently push it into place well, and that's that okay then from there we have our new oil seal Okay. Uh, there's a flat-sided face and an open-sided face. Okay. The open side okay, that actually has this little groove in it, that faces inward towards the inside of the engine with the flat side facing out. Okay. And when you get it in there, of course, you're going to need to press it into place. All you're going to need for that is a 14 millimeter socket, deep well socket, so it'll fit over the shaft here and reach back far enough in there. All right. And all you do just line it up with the edges of that of the seal, okay, and use a hammer or a backhand of a screwdriver or something and just very lightly tap it into place. Uh, don't hit it too hard because it's going to be pretty easy to to uh, deform that seal. Okay, so as soon as you feel any resistance against you, go ahead and stop tapping on that stop tapping on that socket. Okay. Then once that's done, we will reinstall our little metal cap on top of that and then put the impeller back on. And that's pretty much the process. Okay, I have my oil seal back in. You can see that or not. It's back in there. All right. Next will come this metal cap with this spring-loaded seal. Okay. And I'll just use a slightly larger socket to tap that into place. We've got our metal cap with our spring-loaded seal in place. Okay. Now, all that's left is to put the washer back on the impeller, on the impeller shaft, and then make sure you've got your, your little nylon washer there with your oil seal inside the impeller. Okay, and then we just re-thread the impeller. Back onto the shaft. Got that, take your 12 millimeter socket, tighten it down, and then we'll put the cover back on. Okay, we got the cover back on. Uh, we've got our four bolts here uh, that we're going to tighten down. We've got a radiator hose back on, hose clamps in place, tighten everything down, fill it back up with water, and fill it back up with oil, and run it, let it get up to temperature, and then check your oil, make sure that there's no water getting back into your oil, and if that's oil is nice and clean, you're not losing any coolant, looks like you fixed the problem. Hope this helps you. Thanks for watching.